Hi, Matt McAleer, President, Director of Private Wealth, Cumberland Advisors, October 4th, just after the close with the Moose, John Musso, CEO, Director of Fixed Income here at Cumberland. Moose, a lot of action in in fixed income in the Treasury market today. Yes, and and a big surprise. Um, the jobs numbers, which have been trending down the last few months and has been some of the fuel for the drop in yields that we've seen since the end of the second quarter, uh, really going from you know a 450 at the end of the quarter all the way down to r- roughly a 370 around the time that the Fed cut rates uh, you know, a couple weeks ago. Um, today got a little bit of a kick in the rear end, and that was the jobs number. That was the expectation was 150,000 jobs, printed 254,000 jobs. Uh, market took it on a chin. Uh, yields were up across the board. 30 plus basis points on short paper this week, uh, 20 basis points plus in the middle of the curve in the longer right. end. And here you are with a 10 year bond yield at 397. Um, on the other hand, look at it from where it was at the end of the quarter. We have one chart up, and you can see the Treasury yield curve then, at June 27th, and where it was a couple of days ago. We don't have today, it's a little higher, but uh, October 2nd. So not only has the shape changed, but yields are down as well. And you can see that from the curve. Uh, on the muni side this week, almost no change in yields at all. Why? Voracious demand yeah. for bonds. And a lot of that's being fueled by money that's coming into bond funds. And you know, on one hand, we have a lot of supply in munis. And why? Because the issuers want to beat the rush of the presidential election and the potential volatility. And on the other hand, you have all this money coming into bond funds, and the investors want to beat the rush and buy bonds ahead of the presidential election. Yeah. So, you know, supply meets demand and it's it's being sucked up. Yeah. So, so often in fixed income, yeah. the, the markets will mirror each other. Right, right now, we have a little difference going on. Yeah, a little diversion. Very, uh, a little diversion between the two markets. You ask a, a muni trader, the week's been okay. You ask a treasury trader, it's like, oh, what a week. Yeah. Yeah. How about over on equities? You know, that same news. It's funny how it affects different markets. Good bid to equities. Yep. The, the, the primary uh, fear, I guess, that people continue to discuss is recession. And when you see good, steady job growth, that kind of puts it on the back burner. What I did want to go over, John, was a little shift we've seen in the market over mm-hmm. the last quarter. I'm going to put up a chart that I think uh, clients and, and viewers will find interesting. And that's the Q3 2024 performance review. And if, if you take a look at the U.S. equities over in that middle column, the Q3 24 return, first thing that jumps out at me is that green shaded outperformance in equal weighted S&P versus cap weighted S&P. And been a long time since we've seen that. Yeah, it, it's been a cap weighted market led by, a, we all know the terms, MAG7, MAG6, whatever it may be, but large cap growth. And that's starting to you know change a bit. Remember mm-hmm. back in uh, April, March and April, we talked on, on these Friday uh, episodes, reviews, that the difference in performance between the S&P right. and the equal weighted S&P on a 12-month run rate was 20%. Just so, incredible. So cap weighted had outperformed equal weighted by 20%. And that was an extreme level that historically had only been touched a couple of times. Right. And when it had, the reversion to the mean started to kick off. And that w- that's what we've seen. It happens in all seen. markets, right? That's what we've seen. So we've seen that breadth expansion. You're able to make money in in areas other than just tech. Can still make money right. in tech, but we've seen great moves in industrials, defense, aerospace, financials, uh, cyclicals. So multiple ways to make money. In terms of growth, even though it has sputtered, and you could have you you may have noticed the QQQ Nasdaq 100 in in the third quarter is only up two and a half percent. Right. Right. That, that needs to take a breath. It sure does. Right? Needs to take a breath. Names like NVIDIA and, uh, you know, Microsoft and Google and so forth. As they back and fill here, we've added in our core portfolio, just trying to get to a proper balance right. between growth and value and a diversified allocation. 
Right. And, you know, when you look at it, you say to yourself, boy, it took a long time for this to happen. This, you know, it did. Conversion. And, you know, we don't want to overreact either because Q4 of 2023, we saw this same thing happen. Right. Equal weighted outperformed. Value got a bid. The, the news was, well, the reversion to the mean is here. We better stock up on value. That lasted for all the two yeah, months. Yeah, wait till the first quarter and boom. So, the other let, be, so before we get to overweight any area outside of growth, let, let's see how the next uh, four, six, eight weeks go. Yep. Well, enjoyed it, Moose. Everybody have a very nice weekend. We'll see you next Friday.